So the trailer for episode 9 of Shogun was recently released. You know, the episode titled Crimson Sky. Yeah, take from that what you will. And after watching it, there was one moment in particular that stood out to me. This was the final scene in the trailer. However, not only that, it was actually the entire journey that it seemed like Mariko was going to be going on in the next episode based on what we were shown in the trailer. So with that, I thought I'd break down exactly what this poignant scene at the end of the trailer means and how it could have already told us what could happen in the next episode. So let's not wait any longer and let's get into it. Here is the meaning of this scene in the Shogun Episode 9 trailer. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers from the FX show, the 1980s miniseries, and also the novel. Mariko's arc in the trailer for the next episode is one that seems to be centered around the secret plan that Toronaga has up his extremely wide sleeves. With us not being made aware of what his plan was when the previous episode concluded, it feels like Mariko is at the heart of what's going to happen. Before we get to this scene here, the one that's in question, every frame from the trailer that Mariko is in once she's in Osaka is a piece of the puzzle that will form the journey and end result that we'll see here, or maybe even beyond this scene. I'm going to presume that within this scene that takes place right at the end of the trailer, Mariko is going to be killed, or it's going to be the part of the story that occurs hours before she's killed later on that evening. During this scene, the people that were accompanying Mariko for protection in the earlier part of the trailer no longer seem to be alive and have arrows sticking out of them on the ground, showing that they were most likely attacked by Ishidor's men that are in front of her. It's only the people that were behind her that were still alive, and there is actually a good reason for this. It appears as though the people that are behind Mariko are the hostages which consist of the family members of the daimyos and generals that Lord Ishido and Lady Yochibo no Kata were keeping held up in Osaka in order to guarantee the loyalty of those that were in question. I believe Toronaga's plan that he secretly relayed to Mariko is for her to retrieve those hostages, get them out of the danger that they're in behind the castle gates, and then, once free, Toronaga would hope that the daimyos and generals would most likely switch allegiance to Toronaga due to the fact that they were only loyal to Ishidor because of the threat of death. However, I also think Toronaga could be fully aware of the fact that Mariko would be killed if she attempted to leave with the hostages. So this would almost be like Toronaga's way of allowing her to find the death like she's always wanted to for the past several years since her father betrayed his previous lord by killing him. Although Mariko wasn't a hostage or a prisoner there and said to Lord Ishidor that she felt that she was free to leave as she pleased, I think once behind those gates, Ishidor is going to treat her like a prisoner and not allow her to leave due to the fact that she's closely aligned with Toranaga-sama. So that's where the friction and conflict between the both of them will most likely begin. Hence why when she tries to walk out with Ishidor's hostages, she and the men that were protecting her were met with hostility. The hostages behind her will most likely not be harmed due to the fact that Ishidor needs them alive. But with Mariko looking like she's going to be refusing to stand down and actually wielding a weapon in this moment. A weapon that we know that she's actually handy with due to seeing her in training during a flashback a couple of episodes back. I think she's going to stand there and be prepared to fight to the death in order to try and get those hostages out of the gates. I'm going to be discussing what happens in the 80s miniseries here. Okay, let's get into it. When we look at what occurred in the 1980s TV miniseries and the novel, Mariko did actually meet her end when herself and John Blackthorne arrived in Osaka. They planned on getting the hostages out of captivity, which is exactly what it seems like we're going to see happen in the scene in the upcoming episode. And whilst the both of them were rescuing them, ninjas that were hired by Ishido and Yabushige arrived. It was as Blackthorn and the hostages were escaping that Mariko stayed behind and sacrificed herself by standing in front of the door that later went on to explode. This was so that Blackthorn and the hostages could escape, thus shifting the balance of the loyalty to Toranaga, and meaning that he was able to gain some more strength due to generals and daimyos no longer swearing loyalty to Ishido. It's also said that it was planned for the ninjas to take Mariko and hold her hostage as leverage. I do wonder if we'll see that occur in the show. If it does, that would connect to the real-life historical figure Tamako's death. By this point in the history books, Tamako was dead. She died during the time where Lord Ishido initially took the family members hostage and took over Osaka. It's said that she was most likely killed by the family retainer under the order of if her life were to ever be put in danger, she should be killed instead, meaning that she wouldn't be able to be taken as a prisoner. So if the show does decide to go down this route, although the timeline would be different and not necessarily match up, it would actually connect two different events from the real history. Mariko's death is something that proves to be pivotal in the changing of the tides and the outcome of what will go on to be the Battle of Sekigahara. 
Although Blackthorn doesn't appear to be involved in the scene in the FX version, judging by the short clip in the trailer, I feel he will most likely be involved in some capacity. After all, within the 80s miniseries, he ends up getting injured due to the ninjas and is alongside Mariko when she dies. I think if this scene occurs in the FX show, it's going to be a moment which will be utterly heartbreaking to watch. Blackthorn has strong feelings for Mariko, but he's had to keep them hidden. So in this moment, I feel we'll see them actually coming out because he won't be able to hide them. Blackthorn warned her in the early part of the trailer not to try and leave, and she told him to not involve himself. But with him caring deeply for Mariko in a way that it seems like he's not cared about anybody before, I don't think he's going to let her act alone, and will most likely be working alongside her in carrying out the plan and fighting if the ninjas go after her. So this scene that we're seeing occur right at the end of the trailer is what I believe will be the beginning of the death of Mariko and her committing herself to being willing to die for a greater cause. Torinaga will be aware that she will die, hence why he probably got her involved in the plan as he knew that she wanted nothing more than to escape the prison which was her own life. The description for the next episode is, Mariko arrives in Osaka for the fight of her life. I think that is directly attributed to that final scene where she's severely outnumbered. Plus, the description for episode 10, in the wake of a tragic death. So it feels like that tragic death is going to be hers. Even though Mariko is billed to be in all 10 episodes of the show, which would make you question if she's actually going to be killed or not, I think her feature in the final episode will most likely be some kind of flashback that she could appear in, or her death might occur right at the beginning of the finale. But either way, I don't think the character is going to survive. Her death is too important to the overall story. Whilst I don't know if that's what's definitely going to happen, judging by the novel in the 80s miniseries, it does feel like that's on the cards. The show has made some creative differences with certain elements of the story. One major one is killing off Hiromatsu and also Nagakado in the way that they were killed, so there's nothing to say that they won't kill off Mariko. But like I said, her death is one that is important to the story and enabling it to progress on in the way that the book does. So if they decide not to do that, then I don't know how it would progress. Either way, I think this scene and Mariko's feature in episode 9 could potentially be some of the best moments in the entirety of Shogun. So, there you have it, the meaning of this scene in the Shogun episode 9 trailer. If you want to see more videos on Shogun, then click on the card in the top corner. I've broken down every episode of the show since the first one, and I'll be continuing to do it until the show concludes. I've also been delving into the real historical figures that the characters are based on, so if you want to see more videos on the show, then head over to the channel where there's an entire playlist on it. Do you think Mariko will meet her end? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.